Hello world, Shelly here and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a half and half face side by side comparison of two recently reviewed foundations that several of you pointed out in the comments on the most recent review might be dupes. Well, a dupe for one or the other. So on one side, I will apply the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Foundation. The other side, I will apply the Revolution Pro. What do they call this? The CC Perfection Foundation. Both are very highly rated in my reviews and maybe they are. Maybe, maybe Revolution is trying to dupe out the Estee Lauder here. Very similar packaging. They do have a very similar sort of look and feel on the skin. So I'm just going to wear them both. And we will see how they look compared side by side in the now and in the future. I will come back tonight and we'll just see how they wore. I have already primed with the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. This is probably a terrible day to do anything with foundation. You might be able to hear my congestion. I really thought the September allergy season had wrapped up and passed me by, but I swear as the leaves start falling off the trees, I don't know, something just kicks up and I'm all allergy crazy right now. So, Probably a terrible day for foundation, but eh, you know, keeping it real, guys, keeping it real. We will see. We have pump dispensers on both of these foundations, and I'm going to use a brush that I just got in my recent Ipsy. This is from La Russe. It's the only brush in this kit that came in the Ipsy bag that I haven't had a chance to try yet. The Kabuki brush number 322 very very soft so we will use that i'm also going to try out uh an eyeshadow palette from clarence today so we'll just kind of walk through all this since it's not a traditional foundation review i don't really have to do all of the yapping that i normally do but <laughs> so we'll kind of do this a la get ready with me style. I'm gonna do the Revolution Pro on the my left hand side, the nose ring side of my face. And I have the shade F3 in the Revolution Pro. I think it is a lovely shade match. I have really good luck with Revolution foundation shades. The undertones work well for me and I just have good luck with their foundations in general. I don't know why they agree with me. This one has excellent, excellent coverage. It is the third time I'm wearing it. It was just recently on my channel this past Friday as a review and it scored an A minus. It is lovely. I really like the coverage. I haven't tried to wear it lighter coverage, although I know they claim that you can. I just go straight in for nice medium and that makes me happy. And it just looks really nice. This is my, I would say, winter shade. So I might have a tiny bit too much color on my neck to pull this off right now, but it's close. And it's definitely my winter shade. This brush is super soft and it's really not absorbing any product whatsoever. That's awesome. Awesome. I know it's a good brush because it's got my nose ring totally coated. You guys may occasionally, I don't know, you don't comment about it, but I feel like you must see it because I see it. The fact that my nostrils very often don't look like they have product on them. And I'm sure you see in my videos, I go into my nostrils here and I put coverage there, but it just never stays. But when it coats my nose ring like this really well, then it's usually a good brush. That is uh, one way that I can tell. Maybe the average person can't tell because if you don't have a nose ring, you won't have that way to judge. Gosh, this is just lovely. It's just a really lovely foundation, you guys. I really like this foundation. I like it. I really, really like it. Did not use all of that pump, but uh, we'll keep it on the palette just in case I do decide to go back in for some more. Let's try the Estee Lauder side. Now I have this in, I think I got the neutral shade. Yes, 1N2 Ecru. 
I usually wear 1C1 Cool Bone in these Estee Lauder foundations. Can't remember why. I don't think they have 1C1 Cool Bone in this Hydra Rescue formula, if I remember correctly. They both have that um, compression type tube, like the airless tube, that the inside of the tube is gonna like, what is the word? It's gonna like shrivel up and get sucked in as the product is dispensed. Wow, words are failing me. The Estee Lauder is very more liquidy. I'm gonna try to show you without making a giant mess, but you see the Estee Lauder on the top is the one that's dripping. So that is one difference. My initial thought before getting them on my face is that I think the Makeup Revolution or Revolution Pro is going to have a little bit more coverage just right out of the gate. What is the name of their company? Are they Makeup Revolution? Are they Revolution Beauty? Are they Revolution Pro? Is it XX Revolution? Are these all brands of the same company? Are they sub-brands? Are they all different? I don't understand them at all. I love them, but I don't understand them. So... Yeah, I think this revolution is going to have a little more coverage than the Estee Lauder, but we will see. My initial impression of the shades is they look very similar, which I was just trying to get a shade match, y'all. That's all. Revolution might have a little smidge more pink to it, just a tiny bit more cool toned. There's no product on this brush, so I don't feel like there's a problem with using the same brush for both sides. Oh, I love both of these foundations, you guys. They're so pretty. I do think, right off the bat, the Revolution does have a little bit more coverage. This is just a thinner formula is all. One pass, side by side. Slightly more coverage on the Revolution side. The Revolution shade, on the palette it doesn't look quite so much, but it's a little bit lighter than the Estee Lauder shade. And this is the third shade in the Revolution line. So you do have a little bit more lightness if you are more fair. This is the lowest or lightest shade you know, there's one different undertone, but this is the lightest level of lightness to darkness for the Estee Lauder. I'm going to use what's left of the Estee Lauder and just build it up a little bit where I like a little more coverage with what's left here. All right, let's compare. I think you guys are right, they are quite similar. Revolution's a little bit more coverage. I think I am going to have to set at least the perimeter area of both because they both do stay just a little bit tacky. The Estee Lauder might be a tiny bit more dewy, not much, but maybe just a smidge more dewy. They both have some reflect, like you can see my forehead or the high points of my cheeks, you know, as I turn in the light. You can see that reflect, but I think you might be able to see it just a little bit more on the Estee Lauder side, but let me put the rest of my face on. What is the time? It is 3.10. I'll be right back. Okay, complexion is on. I am wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in shade one to set everything, shade two as my bronzer. My blush is the Wayne Goss in Blush Peony, including the highlights. They're so pretty. Just pretend my brows aren't there because they've been misbehaving. Just, I can't even with these brows. I have primed my lids with the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. I need a new one. This one is almost, you know, I get down to about this point where it's like you're about to pan it and it starts to crack and it still performs beautifully but like when you get to this point and then you open up a fresh one and you feel 
just that like suppleness and the the moisture of the new fresh one it's like ah yeah this one's a dud it's this one's beyond its time but it's hard to let it go because it still works perfectly it just doesn't feel as nice all right let's get into this clarins eyeshadow this is the rosewood gradation i love clarins skincare and i've had great luck with their complexion products like their foundations so i've been wanting to try some of their makeup this was sent to me complimentary from clarins through the octoly pr look at how pretty this is you guys Mm. I've been wanting to try their makeup because I've had great luck with everything else so far. Ooh, we have a mirror and the there's a little plastic cover that holds the little built-in brush thingy, which I probably will not use, but let's see. Here we go. This is right up my alley in terms of the color story. Camera wants to focus every place except the phone, the, the eyeshadow. There it is. This is beauty, beautiful. It looks like we've got a shimmer and what looked to me like probably a matte two satins. If I had to guess, I would call these a matte two satins and a shimmer. So let's dig in, shall we? Where is my Wayne Goss number three? You're not the three, you're the four. I mean, the four is fine too, but I don't make, mean to make you feel bad, number four. I just prefer number three to start with. Here we go. I am gonna start with the lighter pink shade. It looks like it might have a little shimmer in it, but it's the lightest one in terms of going for something for a crease transition so we'll see if it's too if it's too shimmery for that purpose I have slightly hooded lids so generally I need darkness on this upper transition area to make that recede because if it's got shimmer there it pushes forward the hood of my lid and makes it look more prominent yeah you can use this for a transition totally totally fine it looks like sort of one of those transitional shades that you could play up the shimmer or you can play it down depending where you wear it. This actually, this color goes really well with this blush. Coincidence. Next I'm gonna take the Wayne Goss number six and this darker berry shade. This is the brush that Wayne used in his instant hooded eye eye hack that I tested out recently and I love the hack. It's probably how I'm going to do my eye makeup for the rest of my life. You basically take it, it's just any kind of flat but soft uh, blending brush and you kind of jam it into your eye, suck it, keep your eye open, and then paint on your crease shade with your eye open. You put the color onto both sides of the brush and you will get the perfect crease that maintains your eye shape. It is lovely. <laughs> it works really well. The key is to keep your eyebrows down while you're doing it, but then afterwards I will, I will just blend a little bit with my brows up so that I can blend it into the transition. He did not use a transition shade in his hack, but I really like to have a transition shade. If you don't have enough space between your brow and the hoods of your lids, you can skip it. But that's why I've been doing transition first, then his trick, and then I blend them together. And it just really maintains the eye shape. If you go full out, you can put the tape on the side and do the little winged out and we're not gonna go full out today, we're just doing basic. I'm gonna take that same shade and the Alter Ego number five, it's just a flat shader brush, and bring that berry color onto the outer third to half of my lid. These are not very powdery, which I like. You don't get really any kick up in the pan, which means you also aren't likely to get fallout very easily. It does mean that you have to build them up a little bit, you know, dip back in to get a little bit more color, build it up, but 
as I've always said, I would rather have to build up than to go in and have way too much product. It is so much harder to blend out too much product than to build up more product. So this is right up my alley in terms of my preference for how an eyeshadow performs. You can see the matte has plenty of opacity. Very nice pigment. Pretty color too. Makes me want Thanksgiving. Real Techniques small shader. I think I'm gonna do, okay, let's do the shimmer. I'm gonna start with the brush. I'll probably end up using my finger, but let's start with a brush just to see how it performs with a brush. Oh, that's fine. I'm gonna do inner, the inner half of my lid. Oh yeah, you get plenty of payoff with a brush if you like it that way. I like that this is just a little deeper than a, than a highlight because sometimes a highlight shade in a small palette like this when you've only got four shades to work with Sometimes it's overpowering and it's just too much and it's hard to tone those down. You know, when it comes to like inner corner highlight, if you're if you're picking a, a palette that's a four shade palette, you're not gonna have every color of the rainbow or every lightness to darkness or every type of texture. You're, you've got four to work with. So when it comes to palettes like this, I fully expect to take whatever highlight I put on my face and use it as my inner corner highlight. I would rather that than something that's too much for the eye in my palette. You know, in a little palette like this, something that's bright enough for an inner corner highlight might not be versatile for the rest of your eye look. So I think this is well curated for, I don't know, the best case scenario of usage, I would say. This is a really nice shade too. I'm really digging taupes lately and it's almost like a taupey, there's a little hint of copper to it. It's just different than the usual gold and I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna same brush. I'm gonna go back into the berry and just kind of wiggle over the, the seam or the transition between the two just to make it a little less obvious where one starts and the other stops. That shade did give me a little bit of fallout, so let's brush that away. It brushed away easily, so that is good. It's a pretty dry shadow formula, which is good when it comes to fallout. You're not likely to have it smear into your makeup. This is the Wingoss 20. I'm going to go into the darkest brown shade here and use a little bit in the outer seven. Thank you to Nisha at Sugar Puff and Fluff for calling it the outer seven because it totally changed how I think about the outer corner of my eye. I'm going to take what's left to blend out the crease. I'm gonna take some of that same brown with the Wayne Goss number five and run it on the outside of my lower lash line. And connect it in the corner. Liner mascara, I will be right back. Mascara is the Pat McGrath Dark Star, and my lip is Pat McGrath Lust Gloss in Divine Rose. Normally for reviews, I don't use setting spray, but pretty much on an everyday basis when I'm not reviewing a foundation, I do. And since they'll both get treated the same way, I'm feeling just a little bit dry, and it's not the foundation's fault. I was feeling dry before I started this, but I have been playing around with this Glass Skin Veil Mist from Peach and Lily. Nice glass bottle, crazy town. But uh, I think I wanna use a little bit of it. 
because it's really pretty and the sprayer is so good. Mm. Okay. All right, well, what do we got? Oh, I tasted it. Whoops. Don't inhale before it settles. Yikes. All right. Here's what we're starting with. It's three something. <laughs> I'm gonna go about my day. I'm gonna wear this face. We will come back later on and see which side, well, just what they look like, how they hold up, how they compare. See you in a bit. Let's get a daylight check-in, shall we? There are a bunch of vultures right above my head. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but uh, what the heck, let's let's see how this is looking. In daylight, it's been about two and a half hours or so. I did have to blow my nose one time. I was as careful as I could be. I asked my mom what she thought. I explained that I'm wearing a half and half face of foundations, both of which I like. One's more expensive, one's not. Which side did she think was the expensive side? And uh, she thought this side was the expensive side. Go makeup revolution or whatever you call yourself these days. I hear birds, like things are happening out here. Nature, man, nature. All right, there you go. I'll be back tonight. We'll see how these two wore side by side. It is 12.53 a.m. Should we zoom in and take a look how these two sides held up? Let's do that. Generally speaking, they both still look lovely, <laughs> which I fully expected because I already knew that I enjoy both of these foundations. They both wear very well. They both have blush bronzer highlights still intact. I've lost a little bit of coverage on my chin, really on both sides, so I think that is even, even Steven there. I did have to blow my nose one more time, so I blew my nose twice today. There's a little bit of coverage missing from my nostrils, but really I can't even tell that I blew my nose to tell you the truth. I feel like around my mouth, they're both doing about the same on my sort of smile lines, on my motion lines, breaking up just the tiniest bit on those lines at this point, but nothing major. My nose still looks smooth on both. Nothing looks dry or cakey anywhere, really. <laughs> I do think that the shade of the Makeup Revolution is a little bit lighter and the coverage of the Revolution side is a little bit more, more, <laughs> I was going to say fuller, but it's not full coverage. I just mean fuller than the Estee Lauder side, but they're both beautiful and you know what that means. You can save 30 bucks by going with Revolution Pro. <laughs> Plus, Revolution is a cruelty-free brand, so if you are paying attention to that, that's a thing. Save some money. It's beautiful. My skin feels exactly the same on both sides. I, I love them both. <laughs> what can I say? Let's talk about the eyeshadow briefly. The Clarins, uh, still beautiful, still completely intact. It's maybe thinking about starting to crease on this eye a little bit, but I'm totally fine with this. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> I think it wore wonderfully. So bravo to the Clarins. Thumbs up on their eyeshadows. This is the Rosewood Gradation number 02. So thank you to Octoly and to Clarins for gifting me this eyeshadow. I enjoyed it. I will continue to use it. There you have it, side by side. Save yourself some money. Go with some Revolution Pro. Unless you like Estee Lauder, stick with Estee Lauder, whichever is your preference. 
you know, if you have more fair skin than I do, you might have to go on the Revolution side because they've at least got a couple shades lighter than this one, whereas on the Estee Lauder side, this is it. So there you have it. Another Friday foundation. It's not really a review, I guess. Comparison is in the books. If you enjoy foundation videos, if you had fun with this one, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.